In a trendy refurbished warehouse district, on a spring night, people gather at a creative space. But they aren't here for wine and sculpture. They're here to hear about frogs. I'm going to tell you a story tonight I call From Silent Spring to Silent Night, A Tale of Toads and Men. And Few say, biologists have a story like Tyrone Hayes. The largest chemical company in the world, Novartis, asked us to test their number one selling product, atrazine. I never heard of it. That was 1997, and Dr. Hayes quickly began learning about the world's best-selling pesticide. Using African clawed frogs in his research, he came to a controversial conclusion. We found that atrazine had demasculinizing effects on exposed males, so the voice box of the larynx didn't grow properly, testosterone levels were really low. We eventually found out that sperm production was really low. We also found out that the exposed males could be feminized. They would grow ovaries or grow eggs. It's easy to see why people come to listen to Hayes. He's engaging. Ooh, I know what I'm not drinking tonight. And funny. But he has one simple way of making the connection between his audience and his frogs. So as they tell you what atrazine does to this frog's hormones, you should be thinking about what it does to me, to humans. Atrazine is now the second most widely used pesticide in the U.S. And the EPA has recently drafted a report citing atrazine as a chronic risk, not just for frogs, but mammals, birds, and other wildlife, even when used according to labels. Chemical companies and agriculture associations refute the research, citing the chemical's role in increasing agricultural output and previous studies finding that atrazine is safe.